Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we have a bit of a mod project for you. Let's do this. This, as you all know, is the Squire Affinity Series Jaguar H for Humbucker. This is a 32 inch scale base featuring a poplar body, maple on maple neck, I believe there's some sort of rosewood-ish option available, um, and a volume and tone control. It's a very simple instrument, but I'm very excited about this base because of its modability. Everything you see here is standard size. The pickup, the bridge, the tuners, uh, pretty much everything. So what we're going to do today is replace all that stuff with some fun bits. For the pickup, we're going to be using a G&L MFD pickup. Now you may be wondering, hey, isn't that a different size than the Music Man pickup? Yes it is, but I found a blank set of Music Man pickup housings on eBay. Uh, they're just black, they look exactly like this, but they're empty on the inside and I was able to put the MFD guts inside that pickup housing. For the bridge, we're going to be using an Allbridge Music Man style bridge, similar to what we used on Project Code Red. And for the tuners, we're going to be using some Hipshot Ultralights, which I just happened to have around, so sweet. So if you want to hear what this bass sounds like in its stock form, be sure to check out my full review of this bass, where we check out all the different tones and various playing styles. In the description below, that video is linked, so be sure to check that out first if you want to hear what this sounds like stock. One other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be modifying these electronics a little bit and adding a series, parallel, and single coil switch to get the most out of the MFD pickup, which we're going to be tossing in there. And we'll be placing that right on the control plate by drilling a hole in there. So we're going to be going through that entire process today. Well, let's get started. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So here we have our Squire Jaguar 4H. We're going to go ahead and do a complete tear down. So let's start off by removing these strings that we have on here. These are MJC Ironworks nickel plated stainless steel 45 to 105. Uh, the standard strings that I use in all my reviews. I'll be saving this set and we'll be attaching this, uh, the same strings on with the new bridge. So let's start off by removing the strings. Okay, now that we have these strings removed, let's go ahead and start tearing this base down. We're gonna start off by removing the bridge and then we'll remove the pick guard, control plate, and pickup. Okay, the bridge is off. Now let's start removing the pick guard. Oh, this is a pretty clean pickup route, relatively speaking, for a $250 instrument. I've seen worse. I mean, this doesn't even have the little circular route that the Mexican fenders have, so I think that's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and remove the control plate now. So I see this pickup is utilizing pickup springs as well as some foam. We're gonna be using some new sets of foam here as well as some new pickup screws. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this pickup out as is. And we have the base completely stripped down now. Uh, first, let's go ahead and take this control plate and strip it down. I'm gonna remove the existing knobs. Ugh, this one. I kind of messed up my thumb a little bit. Let's use the other hand. There we go. Now let's go ahead and disassemble the control plate. Because we are going to be go ahead and replace all of, all of the uh, pots and everything as well. So we are going to place the switch right in the middle of these two knobs, and we are going to be using a drill and some painter's tape for this. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over. 
You're just gonna tape up where you want to drill to give the drill something to kind of grab onto. And we're drilling on the back side of the plate as to not scuff up the front. <clears throat> so we're gonna be drilling right at this point. Let's see if we can get this done with just a hand drill. I'm gonna go ahead and move the base and we'll just uh, work on the control plate for now. Because ultimately we wanna fit one of these switches into the little hole. So we're gonna have to widen it up just a little and I did make it a little off center. So we're gonna have to fix that too. We're actually gonna go ahead and reuse our existing uh, harness here from Squire. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, remove a few things, remove this stock lead right here, as well as uh, some of this wire on the ground. And we'll reattach everything to our control plate and then we'll start shielding the cavities. So let's reattach everything to the stock control plate now. Okay, so now that we have this control plate here, let's just go ahead and remove this wire. Okay, it looks like our control plate is almost ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this off to the side and let's start shielding the cavities. Now let's go ahead and install our bridge. And then we're gonna go ahead and install our control plate and wire up the series parallel switch, connect that to the volume tone controls, and we'll be done. Actually, then we'll do the hip shot ultralights and then we'll be done. Looks like the holes line right up. Let's go ahead and screw in the rest of the holes. I think this bridge looks great on this base. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and attach the control plate onto here and wire up our series parallel switch. Okay, so now our circuit is complete. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug everything in to test it and make sure it works. And if it does, we'll go ahead and restring the base and see how it sounds. Okay, I did not get any output. I'm gonna go ahead and rewire the three-way switch because I think that's where the issue lies. So let's go ahead and do that. Success! So we wired up the three-way switch via the G and L diagram for series parallel single coil. Uh, let's go ahead and screw in the control panel. 
and we will install our Hipshot Ultralight tuners before uh, stringing it back up and playing this bass. See what it sounds like with these mods. So let's reinstall this control plate and take it from there. Okay, we have all our hardware installed. Let's go ahead and work on these tuners now. So here we have our headstock. Let's go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna go ahead and remove the stock tuners. And I hit my camera stand, who cares? Uh, let's go ahead and unscrew these tuners. And then we'll go ahead and install our hip shots. Okay, our tuners are removed, but we still have to remove the stock bushings that are in here. And we're gonna be doing that with a, uh, with a little hammer and a Allen and a uh, whatchamacallit, a socket that's just gonna fit right in there. All done. Now let's grab our hip shots. So as you can see, our bushings are a little loose. So we are gonna be using the painter's tape trick uh, to thicken these up a little bit and get the appropriate uh, thickness that we need so they fit properly. Okay, now with our bushings installed, let's go ahead and install our Hipshot Ultralight Tuners. Okay, with our tuners installed, we're gonna go ahead and drill the tuner holes on the back of the headstock. And we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and reattach the strings and uh, set this bass up and we're gonna go ahead and play it. I'll see you back at the, uh, at the wall. And we're back. We have successfully modified our Squire Jaguar H. We have an Allbridge bridge, a GNL MFD pickup underneath this Music Man pickup housing, a three-way switch for a series parallel and single coil, and some Hipshot Ultralights at the headstock. I'm a little bit sweaty. <laughs> Let's go ahead and plug this bass in and see what it sounds like. I've already set it up and tuned it up so it's ready to go. And I dropped my cable. So first in the bottom position for the three-way switch is parallel mode, which in my opinion is the most balanced. Here's what that sounds like. doesn't sound bad, doesn't sound bad at all. I'm really digging this MFD pickup in this bass. Now let's check out single coil mode in the center position. We do get a little bit of single coil hum and we are utilizing the front bank of magnets on this pickup. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Finally, we have series mode, which is the spicy mode. Here's what that sounds like. Very nice. 
So we can definitely hear a big output difference between series and parallel. Let's check that out one more time. Here's parallel. And series. It's getting pretty close to clipping the amp in series mode, honestly. So uh, yeah, this is a spicy pickup, but I am digging the improvement. Now in regards to balance with these Hipshot Ultralight tuners, we do still get a little bit of neck dive and your mileage may vary as these bases do vary in weight and a heavier body will counterbalance the neck more than a lighter body. So even with the Hipshot Ultralights, we still do get a little bit of neck dive, but it definitely is manageable as this base is a very lightweight. Uh, the bridge, the Allbridge bridge, I think looks really great on here as well. I've seen some people install some uh, Hipshot Kick-Ass or the Omega bridge, and those almost stick out a little bit too far on the E-string side, and they almost overlap the edge of the body. However, this Allbridge bridge sits nicely right at the end of the body, and I think it looks great. So, overall, how much money did we spend to modify this bass? The GNL pickup, I think, was around, I think it was $100 or so. The Allbridge bridge was around $100, and the Hipshot Ultralight tuners were around $20 a pop, plus shipping and whatever, so call that another $100. That being said, the only thing that probably needed to be changed here was the pickup. The aesthetic and functional differences of the tuners and the bridge in my opinion, you could take it or leave it. It's not necessary, but I just did it because I had the parts lying around. Overall, though, I'm very happy with this mod project. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, I will be doing an in-depth video going over more of the tones, and I'll be slapping it and playing with a pick and whatnot. And we may even compare it to our modified Squire Bronco. <laughs> you thought I sold that or got rid of that? No. I modified that with a different pickup, and we we're gonna check that out in another video, and we might even do a comparison. So keep an eye out for that as well. But for now, here is our modified Squire Jaguar H. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the modified Squire Jaguar H. And as always, until we groove again.